another fantastic show for you today. Lemoncello trifle. You gotta try this. This is really, really simple. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to ring the bell. Make this dessert. You're gonna love it. Okay, well, it is indeed one of my favorite desserts, but I got so many favorite desserts. I love dessert. <laughs> I tell you, if it was my last meal, give me chocolate mousse, give me chocolate truffle, give me a bunch of dessert. I love dessert. I love sweet. And uh, I gotta watch it these days as I get older. Anyway, let me tell you about this dessert. Um, Chocolate, tr uh, lemon, uh, lemoncello truffle. We can make it with lemoncello. We can make it with Grand Marnier. We can make it with Calou. We can do whatever we want. The cake, then we're going to put in. So what it is, is, um, is a, a, a mixture of whipped cream. I use mascarpone. You can use cream cheese. And then we put a, 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 a chiffon cake. And then, we, and then on top of that chiffon cake, we're going to put some uh, simple syrup. And then we put more of that cream and mascarpone. And we're just going to decorate it. It's very simple to make. Uh, today we're making a, a, a lemoncello truffle. That means everything is going to be lemon. But uh, then you can do exactly the same recipe. Instead of using a lemon, you can use an orange. Same deal. And instead of using lemoncello simple syrup, you're going to use Grand Marnier simple syrup. Okay? It's very simple to make. Okay? You can put strawberries in it. You can do a bunch of stuff. I'm going to make it very easy. Okay? And also another thing that I want to say that is important. For those of you that, that follow my, uh, my channel, you know that I don't just give you recipe. I like to give you my philosophy about cooking. I like to teach you things. You know, I'm a cooking instructor. That's what I've been doing my whole life. Uh, I was a chef in a restaurant business my whole life, and I sold my restaurant 25 years ago, and I opened up a cooking school, and that's what I do. I teach people how to cook. So uh, I like to teach you my philosophy about food. At the end of the day, you want to be a good cook, you just got to know the ingredients. All right, so very simple to make. We're going to make a, a cookie sheet of chiffon cake. Then we're going to cut in circles, and we're going to use the circle to make the dessert. This is a really simple uh, chiffon cake recipe. Uh, we're gonna, we got the mixer right here. We're going to put some uh, cake flour. So I'm putting the flour in there. And make sure I try to put it all in there. And uh, I use cake flour. Uh, I use, uh, uh, this is sugar, about three ounces of sugar. We'll publish the recipe on the, on the website so you'll have it. This is a uh, baking powder. And, um, and we're going to mix this slowly. And um, we're going to put a little bit of uh, salt. I use a vanilla salt. I have this fabulous vanilla salt. You can use regular salt. You know, to make cake, you say, why do I use salt? Salt is magic, you know. Salt is, uh, is, uh, is a touch of magic. It just enhances the flavor of the ingredient. Uh, you don't have to put salt in here, but you'll be, you don't, you're not going to know it's in there. You're not going to taste salty. You're just a pinch of it. That's all you need, right? So we're going to mix it up. Hey, I, I got to teach you something interesting, guys. You know, when you're doing a, a small batch in a mixer like that, you probably notice it, then the, um, the, the, the whisk doesn't go in the bottom, especially like if you're doing two or three eggs and you need to whip the egg, the cream of the eggs in different cake recipe. The thing doesn't touch the thing. <laughs> the whisk doesn't touch the bottom of it, right? You notice that? So I'll tell you what I do. I take it, I unhook it, and I put it back up. And I unhook it. So I, what I do is I don't take it up and twist it. I don't do that. I just put it in. I just in like this, but I, I do not uh, uh, put it all. I do not put it up and twist it. I leave it falling, and then you will be amazed. It just touched all of a sudden. Now it's touching the bottom. And don't worry, there's no risk. Well, <laughs> somebody's going to hurt themselves. They're going to say, ah, you told us there was no risk. Do whatever you want, okay? But maybe you should hook it. All right, so then we're going to put some uh, oil in there. I use a vegetable oil or uh, sunflower oil or grapeseed oil. is wonderful for baking because it's got no flavor to it. It's wonderful. And then basically we're going to get into a paste. We're going to put some water in there. And we're going to get like into a paste. And uh, we're just going to mix that up for a little while until it's nice and pasty. And when the whole thing is mixed, then we're going to put some eggs. We're going to put some vanilla. I like to use Tahitian vanilla. All right, see, it's getting there. Let me just get uh, a spatula to get on the side of it to make sure that... Exactly, here you go. All right. We're going to keep mixing it. A little bit. 
So now we have a, a pace going on over there, right? So now we're going to take it. We're going to stop this for a second. And we're going to put our eggs and our vanilla, okay? I kind of like to put the egg a little bit one or two at a time so they incorporate better. But in such a small quantity, we don't need to worry about it. Mix it up. And like I say, you know, you can make this dessert, friends, um, without having to make their own cake. You could buy a sheep on cake somewhere. It's really not that big of a deal to make it. But if you don't want to make it, you can buy one and you'll make the same exact dessert. You know, sometimes there's some... Um, it's some quick uh, uh, steps and things you can buy in that decent. If you know a good bakery, they probably make a wonderful chiffon cake. It's not that big of a deal, and you can certainly buy it. You know, it makes it easier to make the dessert. I mean, this is like, I got the mixer, I got the kitchen, I got the hat, so I might as well show you how to do it. You, you, you want to make this dessert, you don't want to make the cake, skip forward <laughs> to the next one, all right? So now we got this mixed up. And you watch what's going to happen unless it hooked itself, which is a possibility. But I'm going to put the, um, the, the, the mixer down, and you're going to see then the, the, the whisk is going to fall. See? It fell because it was not held. It. And it doesn't have to be held. See? Now all of a sudden, the bottom of it is mixed. So it's a good little trick. All right? So now we're going to go in here, and we're going to turn this guy over for a second so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put this over here, and now I'm going to put a little bit of vanilla. I use, like I said, I use Tahitian vanilla. Just a little bit of Tahitian vanilla. Measure carefully. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? And then we're going to put some lemon zest in there. And remember, this is a microplane grater. Everybody got one of those, right? But every ding-dongs over there, I use it this way. This is not how I use it. You do not put the lemon on top of the tools. Every time I'm doing the video, I'm showing you. This is not how you use it. Because if you use it this way, then, then you, you don't know where you're going the next one. You don't want to go two times at the same space. Because otherwise you get the pith. Okay? Every time I say that, eventually, eventually everybody's going to get it. You watch how many ding-dongs are cooking and they go like this. And then they, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they go to the white and the white is the pith. Okay? So if you look carefully... You can see, especially from the top camera, you'll see that I'm doing, I'm, see, I don't go to the same place twice. You can't go to the same place twice unless you're blind, <laughs> unless you've been drinking too much limoncello. You're not going to go to the same place twice. No, look. And look, 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 look how cool is this. See? See how cool that is? The tool is designed to keep the lemon. That is designed to be used this way. And look, all you got to do now is bam. Oh, bam. <laughs> <laughs> bam. Whatever happened to Bam? He's a good chef. Lovely man, too. Lovely, lovely man. Chef Bam. Emerald. What a lovely, lovely man. Lovely man. Generous, kind, considerate. He certainly uh, introduced all of us to having fun in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, here we go, friends. So, we got lemon, right? We got, um, uh, we got a mixture right there. So now... What we need to do with this, friends, hope you can see it. What we're going to do, friends, this is beautiful mixture right there. Make sure it's nicely mixed. Make sure there's no lumps in there, but there's none. It's beautiful. You see, look. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to fold. I'm going to make a meringue, and I'm going to fold some egg white. So I'm lucky. I'm one of those lucky chefs that has two bowls. So I'm going to, I'm going to now, I'm going to now put the, uh, the, the camera in the other side, so you guys can see, we're now going to make a meringue. And we're going to use the same deal. I got a new whisk. By the way, if you only have one bowl and one whisk, which most people do, that's the way I have it at home, <laughs> uh, I do the white first, and then I put it away, and then I'll do my egg mixture. And let me tell you why. Because if there is some uh, 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 white remaining while you do the white, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is then you cannot now clean this up with a spatula and put some egg in there and think you're going to make a meringue. The fat from the yolk is going to make it impossible to make a meringue. That's why you want a clean bowl. So you start with that, get rid of the meringue, put it aside, and then do your yolks and mix them together. The deal is white in the yolk is perfectly fine. No yolk in the white. Maybe I should wrap no yolk in the white. But <laughs> I don't think so. All right, so, oh, oh, one more thing. So many things to teach you, friends. Is, um, is um, 
make sure there is no yolks in the white when you separate the eggs. It's perfectly fine to have white in the yolk, remember? White in the yolk, okay. No yolk in the white. <laughs> oh, yes. That could be a good wrapping, though. Eh? So, and also, when I separate the egg, I like to do it when it's cold. Because when it's cold, the yolk, what is the yolk? Yolk is mostly fat, right? When it's cold, it's congealed, so it's separated easier. All right? So, no yolk here. Don't even think about it, right? It's better if it's room temperature. If it's not a room temperature, it'll still work. We're going to whisk this up. Now, there's many school of thought when you put the sugar, how fast do you mix it? Um, you know, I've been doing this for 50 years. I think I've tried just about every technique you can try. And, uh, and the technique that I follow is probably for some of the great pastry chefs that I work with in, in, in 50 years in the kitchen. Um, beat, the beat the white until it's foamy and you don't see much yolks, much uh, yellow anymore. It's mostly white. Then add your sugar to the end. Add it whenever it makes you happy. It works either way. We're going to do it until we have kind of a soft peak, not a hard peak, otherwise it's difficult to incorporate it. And then we're going to put it on a cookie sheet. Then the cookie sheet, then we have right there, is a cookie sheet that has been uh, uh, sprayed with a non-stick spray and then a piece of parchment paper. It'll, it'll help us cook it. And I also spray the parchment paper and I use a Baker's Joy or a pan with flour. Okay, and, uh, and you have to do this. It's just, otherwise it'll stick and it'll make it difficult. We got our oven going at 360, which means as soon as this is down, boom, it's gotta go to the oven. Because if you wait, the, 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 the air bubble you just created to make it a light cake, are all gonna deflate it, all right? So if you look at it right now, it's looking pretty good, but we can still see some yellow in there, you see? Now normally, you know, in my classroom, I, um, I have a flashlight, and of course I don't have one, but normally I have a flashlight, I put it in here so you guys can see. But look, I hope you can see that it's, it, it, we have lost all the, the yellow, we're not going to put the sugar, I kind of like to put it slowly, you see, until we have a nice smooth, very, very, very smooth. And we're gonna do this until we have a soft peak. Remember, you gotta preheat the oven. Don't forget to preheat the oven. If you don't preheat the oven, you're gonna go put this in the oven. You know, most oven, when they preheat, they heat five, 600 degrees at the preheat cycle. All the burners goes on, it's gonna burn your cake. So it's gotta be preheated. The element cannot be on. And I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking and then I'm gonna to forget to check. I wanna show you, you know what I wanna show you? This is really too soft of a peak. Look guys, this is the peak I'm talking about. See, look, we got no peak. See, there's no peak. The peak is what's coming out at the end of the whisk. Now look, no peak. Uh, okay, and so we want to do a peak. Not only do we want to do a peak, but we want to do it until, we, if I take my whisk 45 degrees, most of the peak stuff, but the peak, the tip of the peak falls. You're going to say, what is he talking about? Just hang around. Don't go anywhere. Here you go. What is that? Did I do it? Did I do it? Okay, here you go. Okay. Yeah, you see, just hang, hang in there. Don't go anywhere. The tip of the peak, they're going to say, what is he talking about? You see, there's a peak in the tip of it. I want the peak <laughs> to be like this. When I do this in the class, they're all laughing. So, I tell you, it's all about having fun. Uh, let's see what we got here, friends. Oh, see the whisk falls because I don't tie it. Uh, let's see what we got. We got a pick, but now nah, we don't have a pick. So we got to do a little bit longer. And it's good. So then you can all see what's going on. We're almost there. I, I would say 15 seconds. Now I'm going to be out there counting. So for those of you on YouTube that have a stopwatch every time I say something, I have this video, you guys are going to like it, it's funny, I tell you, I love it. Okay, hold on. Let me not go into a, ten, a tension, a tension, and then I do the egg too much. Okay, here's the peak, here's the peak. I'm going to take the whisk, 45 degrees, remember only the tip of the peak should fall. Uh, too soft. So that's probably going to require another six or seven seconds. It's a matter of seconds. <laughs> it's a matter of seconds, I'm telling you. Hold on, hold on. It's, uh, 
It, it needs to be like this and just this. When I tell you it's a matter of seconds, I am not kidding, okay? You watch. Here we go. You watch, you watch, you watch, you watch, you watch. All right, this is a soft peak. All right, here we go. Now, it can't be too long also, because if it's too long, it's difficult to keep it. Oh, this is still too soft. You watch. Sometimes I can just do it like this. It's like I got my exercise. All right, let's see. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got here. All right, we got a tip. <laughs> ah, mamma mia. I'm telling you. Just another four seconds. I'm exhausted to do it by hand. You don't want to do it too much? Oh, be careful. Be careful. Okay, and two, three. Okay, we're done. All right, come to Papa. Let's see what you got here. All right, here we go. We got a whisk. We got a tip. We got a tip. Look, the tip of the, ti the, tip of the peak is the only thing that's coming down. You see, we got a tip. We got a, we got a, 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 a peak. We got a peak. And the tip of the peak is what's falling. You see what I mean? All right, so you don't want to overdo it. If you do it and it's like too, too much, you overbeat it. And then if it's overbeat it, too big of a bubble, it's not going to introduce, it's not going to fold in correctly. Oh, I'm exhausted. I need to take a break. All right, so you got it? Give it another quick little, uh, this is what we want. That's it right there. Beautiful. See? There we go. All right. So now we're going to fold this in. And I mean folding it in, okay, folks? You're going to learn a lot of things today, okay? If you notice, <laughs> here you go. If you notice the spatula, you notice, let me just make sure you turn this guy around so you guys can see what I'm doing. Eh? Turn that camera around. I like this little camera. It's really cool, isn't it? Uh, uh, what is it called? Osmo Pocket. That's what it's called. You notice most camera folks got a straight side and a round side. Have you ever asked yourself why? Because you notice most balls are round. So when you go inside a ball, you want to go with a round inside the ball. See, round. Whenever you see some uh, chefs that are going like this in the bottom of the ball, I don't know. All right, so remember, you want to go with a round thing and you want to fold it in. All right, a round thing. A round side that goes in the bottom of the ball. All right, so we're going to put them around. First, we're going to put just one really quick just to, uh, to air it out. To make it easier, and we're going to fold it in, not having to worry too much about this, okay? Now we're going to put in the rest, and I'm going to show you the method that we use. It's called folding. And you see, remember, don't overbeat it. Don't overbeat it. You get a lot more out of the meringue. Remember, we don't want it to be so big either. We don't want it to be really, really big, right? Because we, go, we won't get a circle. I don't want my circle to be too thick. Because it's going to go in a glass. So we don't want to overbeat it. All right? So now, I hope you can, be, you can see inside the bowl. I take my spatula, and I go in, and I fold the bottom on top. You see? Take the bottom and put it on top. Look. Take the bottom and put it on top. And every so often, you cut in the middle, and you take the bottom, and you put it on top. You see? Look. Bottom goes on top. Bottom goes on top. You're folding it. You see? See right there? Just like that. Really simple, right? See? Bottom goes on top. All right? Now, what we're doing, we're preserving our air bubble so then we have a nice fluffy cake, but not too high. We don't want it to rise too much. So don't worry too much about making it perfect, okay? You don't need it to be perfect. Because it's going to cook. It's going to find its way. Now, we're going to take the cookie sheet that we did earlier, and we're going to put a cake on it right there. See? Smells delicious. It really smells amazing. So like I say, you can skip that whole step, friends, if you just want to um, make the, uh, the quick dessert. You can skip that whole step and, um, and buy a chiffon cake already made. Let me get my spatula. All right. I use what is called an offset spatula. It makes it easier to spread it out. You don't have one of those to stick a regular spatula. Okay, look, look, it's pretty simple. We don't want to play with this too long because if we do, we're going to destroy our air bubble. You see, look. There you go. Look how simple that is, friends. You see? A child could do this. 
not my child. I don't have one, actually. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I say, don't, don't play with it too much. But look at me. I'm playing with it. So don't do what I do. <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. Where's my thing? I want to clean my spatula. I want to clean my spatula, so now it's stuck on the other spatula. <laughs> ay, 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 mamma mia. There you go, friends. We're not going to go in a preheated oven, 360 degrees, probably for like the 10 to 12 minutes, <coughs> somewhere around there. 360, put it right in the oven. Don't forget to put a timer. <laughs> Don't forget to put a timer, because... You say, oh, yeah, I'm going to remember, yeah, and then you forget, and you got to start all over again. All right, so we're going to let it cook, and then we'll come back, we'll finish the dessert. Okay, the cake is out of the oven, we let it cool, and now what we're going to do, we're going to, go, we're going to make four of them, so it's easy, I don't spend too much time making too many of them. And uh, I got my trifle glass that I use, and, um, and I got myself a cookie cutter. And, uh, and what I do is I measure what size, like, like I want my cookie to be kind of in the middle of, uh, of this right there. So I, I, I get a, a, a cutter that fits right there. So I'm going to cut my pieces of uh, chiffon cake, the same exact size you see right there, and it'll fit right in there. So I'm going to cut four pieces, all right, that's all I need is four pieces. And then I'm going to make the mix, and I got some, uh, see right there, so you can do this in advance. Of course, you can do it in advance. <laughs> you should do everything in advance when it comes to cooking. Everything should be made in advance. So, remember, you don't want to make the cookies. You don't have to make the cookies. Yeah, I mean the cookies, the cake. You can certainly buy a chiffon cake. There's a lot of producer out there of chiffon cake, a lot of bakery out there that make a beautiful chiffon cake. It's not that big of a deal, so it saves you a lot of uh, time if you don't want to do it. So now, inside those, uh, those glasses, we are going to make a mixture of heavy whipping cream. I got the whipped cream going on over there. I got mascarpone cheese. I got sugar, vanilla, lemon curd. I don't know if you've ever used lemon curd before. Gives you a nice little lemon flavor. That will be perfect in there, right? Um, and, uh, and that's it. And oh, lemon zest. So where the whipped cream is already whipped, almost whipped. I got it going so we didn't have to wait that long for it to get going. And when it's firm... Then we're going to put the mascarpone cheese and the sugar and the lemon curd. And that's going to give us the mixture that we're going to use. And then we've got simple syrup to put on top of the cake. Really simple to do. Okay? Simple syrup is the sugar water. The only difference my sugar water it has limoncello in it. And if I were to make this with orange instead of lemon, I would use a Grand Marnier or some kind of orange liqueur. Cointreau is delicious also. Okay? So we're looking good here. We got the whipped cream. We want it to be just whipped cream. That's all. Just a nice consistency of whipped cream because we're going to put it in a pastry bag. We're going to work with a pastry bag. It'll be easier, right? So let's check it out. We're looking pretty good. And we're going to put the, um, the um, mascarpone cheese inside. All right, I'm going to stop so I can put my mascarpone cheese in there. If you don't have mascarpone cheese, mascarpone cheese is an Italian cream cheese. Just use cream cheese. Don't worry about Italian cream cheese. Just use an Italian, regular cream cheese. It'll be delicious. Mascarpone is very rich, triple cream. It's delicious. A little bit of vanilla. Boop, a little bit of vanilla. The sound effect is very important. A little bit of sugar. We don't want to put too much sugar. We don't want to put too much sugar because if we put too much sugar, if we put too much sugar, then a simple syrup, everything is going to be too sweet. So just a little sugar and we're done. We don't want to overbeat it. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to put my, uh, uh, oh, let me do it. Let me do it right now. I always forget something. If you've been following my channel, you notice I always forget something. And uh, put a little bit of lemon curd in there. All right? And if you have not been following my channel, I would like you to do so. So do me a favor. Please subscribe to our channel. 
If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to ring the bell. All right? So, what we want to do now is test it to make sure we have enough sugar. This should be a nice firm whipped cream like mixture. We don't have any place to put this. So, what I want to do is I want to test it, friends. Make sure it's good though, meaning it's got enough sugar. Enough. Mmm, it's delicious. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. It's not too sweet, it's perfect. So, we're going to put this in a pastry bag so it's easier. It's easier. To, to, to put it in a glass, pastry bag, okay? Now remember when you go, oh, look. I forgot the lemon zest. <laughs> I don't think there is a day that I'm doing a recipe and I don't forget something. I go, oh shoot, I forgot to do that. Oh shoot, I forgot to do that. So here we go. Remember, remember, always use the, uh, the grater the way I'm doing it. Don't use like all them ding-dongs doing it this way online, okay? Just make sure. You put the tool on top of the lemon, not the lemon on top of the tool, so you don't go to the same place, you don't get the white bit. The white bit is bitter. All right, so here we go. Right there, we're done. All we're gonna do now, we're gonna mix this up a little bit. Right? And now we're gonna put this in a pastry bag. Remember when you put something in a pastry bag that is not firm yet, because this needs to be refrigerated, you wanna take your pastry bag and you wanna twist it before you put in your cheese, your cream, whatever it is you're putting in. This is a bit disposable pastry bag, right? Okay? You want to make sure you do that, otherwise, guess what happened? It goes all over the place, right? So, all you're going to do now is you're going to take your cream, your cheese, whatever it is you're using, obviously, in this case, cream and cheese. All right, we're going to put it in there. I use my hand to back of the hand to make sure I get everything out. Clean my spatula, remove this, take my bag upside down, twist it this way, and then twist it this way. And then you notice nothing is coming out in the back because it's closed in there, right? So now I got my glasses, the trifle glass that I'm gonna be using. Right? And now all I gotta do is first of all open up the bag, right? And put a layer of my, <laughs> my mascarpone cream. Then I'm gonna take a, uh, a, 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 a chiffon cake and I'm gonna make sure I push it really, really good in there. You see, look. Take it and push it really, really good in there, all right? See how simple that is to do? Now, at this point, you could put strawberries, you could put raspberries, you could put a bunch of fruits in there if you want to. I just like a nice, plain, clean lemon, but that's my preference. Now is when we're going to put a simple syrup, about an ounce of simple syrup. Simple syrup is just sugar water, except this sugar water right there, friends, has lemon cello in it because it's lemon. Everything is lemon. See, look, look. Take it right there, put it in there slowly, slowly, so it has time. If you cut it nice and small, that lemon, that shampoo syrup should stay on the top like for a little while, you see? See the way it's staying on the top? Which is wonderful, that means my, my, uh, my cookie is really tight and the shampoo syrup and stop. So it's gonna take a little while for that cookie to absorb and that's gonna make the, the, the cookie, the cake. That's gonna make the cake so, so moist. You ever had some time you, you get a cake? And the cake, by the way, is so dry. You put simple syrup in it and that takes it away. So now all we gotta do is make sure we have enough cream right there to finish it all. And all I gotta do is really, really simple, friends. I go around it. I go around it. Ha, huh, look at it, I made a mess. It looks like I'm only gonna have enough for three anyway. Oh wow, I really made a mess. I look like I, I have just enough for three. I didn't make enough, obviously. Should have made just a little bit more, but that's okay. Right there, at this point, we're gonna take a, a strawberry, and we're gonna put right on top of it with a candied lemon. Strawberry, candied lemon, really, really simple. 
See, a little candied lemon right there in the front. Take a strawberry. I just cut the strawberry in little slices right there, so it looks kind of cool, right? A little candied lemon. Hey, since we are at it, let's bring in some uh, mint leaves. Just a little mint leaves to make it look pretty. Uh, my mint leaves are not so pretty. They were pretty an hour ago, and now they're a little tired looking. <laughs> They're just a little tired looking, but they're gonna be fine. It's best to show if you took the strawberry. Uh, oh, here we go. Right there, and then we're gonna take a little bit of powdered sugar. Really simple. Little powdered sugar right on top of it. There you go, very simple. There you go, lemoncello, trifle. This is delicious, you guys gotta try to make this. Very simple. You can make it way in advance, keep it in your refrigerator up to 24 hours before your dinner party. It's wonderful, easy to make. I know you're going to love it. It's really, really, really good.